They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but my eyes just ain't beholding. I always say the JoJo figure market is more valuable than the New York stock market, but some of these are just straight up bad investments, especially some super action statues. I think some of them are straight up, straight up just ugly. And this is the top 10 list of ugliest super action statues. Number 10, Okuyasu. I don't think the Okuyasu super action statue looks bad to be to be honest, I just think the legs look super weird. And this is pretty common with super action statues, but I think this is one of the best examples. When part of the figure is very wide, it then gets very narrow, especially at the joint so the figure can bend because it's an action figure, you know, it has to, has to move and stuff. This typically does not look very good. And Okuyasu's pants are the best example of this. His very baggy pants combined with that little itty bitty tiny knee joint looks very bad to me. Everything else about the figure is pretty good. Even the whack ass hairstyle got translated into a figure pretty well. But every time I see this figure, I just like instantaneously look at the legs because I just cannot get over it, especially with his hips. You know, his balls are exposed. I mean, you know, his ball joints, not his ball sack. And Josuke is in a similar situation where his pants look like a trash bag, but he has that really long jacket. So his ball, his ball joints, once again, ball joints are covered. So you can't really see it. Unlike Okuyasu where his balls are just out there. He looks good from the waist up. Waist down, it's just, it's just kind of a mess with this figure. Also, I think the faces just look kind of goofy, to be honest. Don't really like that. Number nine is Bruno Bucciarati. Bruno is in the same boat as Okuyasu where, you know, he's not like super ugly, but he still has some less than ideal characteristics. I don't know if it's just me and I'm tweaking off the perk or if the neck of this figure really is like disgustingly long. Bruno, you know, this figure is almost perfect except for the neck. The neck just looks super weird to me for some reason. It looks like it is way longer than it like proportionately it should be. And I don't know if it actually is that long or if it's just his high collar and then his neck looks weird to me and that makes it look longer. But for some reason it's just, it's just so strange to me and so to put my money where my mouth is and i spent no money so i'm putting no money where my mouth is i will check to see if his neck is mathematically too long this is how i checked bruno's neck ratio i randomly selected three super action statues that were not wearing hats or had tall shirt collars so that the top of their heads and their necks were both visible i copied their heads and lined up the top of their head with the bottom of their top row of teeth. All of the random three figures had the eyes lined up roughly with their collarbones, but Mr. Bucciarati was a different story. After lining up the copied head in the same place as all the other figures, the eyes were about halfway down his neck, not at his collarbones. So this confirms that his neck is freakishly long. And aside from his neck, look, let's, let's be real here. It doesn't matter how much you like part five, how much you love Bruno. His haircut is a little bit ugly. It did not go very well from already ugly to the third dimension where it looks even worse. Number eight, Gold Experience Requiem. Gold Experience Requiem, more like green experience requiem, but for real life, why is it green? I just think it looks bad. I don't know why it's green. Number seven is Kakyo. Oh, oh, him. Number seven is Kakyo Wing. Isn't he supposed to be like a pretty boy in the story? Like there's some, like there's a line about him looking pretty or something. So then can someone explain to me why his super action statue straight up looks like a goblin? He looks like a Neanderthal that just defrosted and found a box of red hair dye. And speaking of his hair, that does not look good either. In 2D, you know, when you're watching the show, when you're reading the book, his hairstyle, you can, you can mentally wrap your head around it. You understand what it's supposed to look like. It's kind of weird, but you still get the theory. But I have yet to see his hairstyle in the third dimension whether it's a figure like this, one of those figures that doesn't move, the Nindroid, a wig. Every time I see it in 3D, it just looks really weird. And the Super Action Statue, it is no exception to this. It still is just as bad as every other 3D rendition of his hairstyle I've seen. But I will give him credit, he comes with some pretty cool glasses. Number six, Hierophant Green. Like user like stand, they both made the list. And you probably already know what I'm about to say. The Hierophant Green Super Action Statue, looks like a Power Ranger. And it's kind of a tragedy because I think Hierophant Green looks pretty cool, but he's, you know, he's not always shown with just legs like in the Super Action Statue. He usually, cause he like uncoils and stuff. And usually he's shown uncoiled and stretched out and things like that. You know, he's in, he's in tentacle mode, but with the Super Action Statue, he doesn't, he doesn't get that. He's, he's damned to have legs with the Super Action Statue. I think that kind of sucks. He was, he was like one of my favorite stands when I first watched part three. I was like, oh my God, this thing's so awesome. It can unravel and stuff. He, he loses his wow factor when he's just, legged up five cars 
four ACDC, and three Wamu. Is it cheap of me to, you know, list three at once? They all have extremely muscular and very slutty designs. Don't get me wrong, I love buying figures of half-dressed beefcakes, but I can't lie to myself and say they don't belong on this list. I think the biggest problem that all three of these figures share is their extremely muscular physiques, you know, their large girthy muscles, and their tiny itty bitty plastic joints. Kara's bicep is a good example of this. He has that whole Mr. Universe physique going on, and then you, you know, your eyes go like one inch lower, probably less than an inch lower if I'm being honest, and all you see is like that microscopic elbow. What's even worse than this is the shoulders. The shoulders of all three of these figures look very disconnected from the rest of their bodies. Once again, this is because of the massive muscles and the tiny itty bitty pieces that make up the joints. So I'll explain to you why I ordered the Pillar Man in the way that I did. Cars is fifth because, you know, he has those small joints. I was already just roasting him, but at least you can use his hair to cover his ugly shoulders. ACDC has these same issues but he has that chest thing, those shoulder pads, that weird shirt. So it's kind of distracting and not as horrible. But Wamu, like he's, he's just straight up the worst. His shoulders are extremely exposed and he has that like tiny crop top. That thing, that thing ain't covering nothing. You can see everything. He is all exposed. You cannot hide anything about how he looks. You can see every bad feature about him. Number two, Magician's Red. Dog, Magician's Red is so cool. Like, it's a damn shame I have to include him on this list. He's pretty naked like the Pillarman, but his his muscles don't cause as many ugly issues. It looks it looks decent, but he has that giant hole in his chest, which is the Pillarman don't have that at least. They have other issues, but they don't have that. It's it's not really a good look if you ask me. But the worst part about the Magician's Red Super Action Statue is definitely the legs. He's supposed to be on fire, but it doesn't really look like fire. It looks like he just has really fuzzy pants on. There's some Magician's Red figures. They, they they pull off the fire legs well. They make it look good. This is not one of those figures. Below the knee on this figure can be replaced with even more flaming legs. But if you ask me, it doesn't look that good. It kind of looks like he's wearing ice skates that are on fire. I don't, it's just it's just not that great. At least they gave it to him. They never gave Hierophant Green any cool legs. He just got, he's just standing. He's just standing there. Number one. Number one ugliest super action statue. Part three, Polnareff. I, I really, I really do not have anything good to say about this. Polnareff is my number one favorite character in JoJo. And I still like, this thing is still dookie fart. His hair, ugly. His face, uglier. His shoulders, they got the same issues as the Pillarman. And his neck looks very strange to me too. It's possibly even worse than Bruno's. His neck looks so long for some reason. The only redeeming thing I can say about this is, for me, I love Polnareff. So what if someone doesn't love Polnareff? Would they buy this? Probably not, because God is just ugly. But he comes with the accessories to reenact the sign language scene, so that's that's like the best part. That's objectively the best thing I can say about this super action statue. Thank you for watching this video and subscribe if you feel like it.